All right, adding, subtracting polynomials. The first thing we want to define is a monomial. And that prefix, M-O-N-O, -N -O, means one, right? Monomials means one, one term. One term. And that term is a number, a variable, or the product of numbers or variables. Product is what kind of math? Multiplication. For it to be a monomial, when we're talking about terms, if it's a monomial, there will be no addition or subtraction. Okay, if it's a monomial, one term, no addition and subtraction. Okay, terms in a polynomial are separated by addition and subtraction. So that's, but if you're dealing with a monomial, it's going to be one piece, everything's multiplied together. That's what a monomial looks like. Some examples of a monomial. Be like the number negative 7. That's a monomial. Or the letter X. That's a monomial. Because it's one term. Or the product. 4 times X. 4X. Four That's a monomial. One term. It could be the product of two letters x squared y. That's still all multiplication that's happening there. Or it could be a product of numbers and and more than one letter. So it could be like something like negative 8 x to the third y to the second. All of those are examples of monomials. And so there's no addition subtraction in any of those. So that's that's a big difference in a monomial and polynomials. Inside of that monomial, there's this thing called a degree. The degree of a monomial is the sum of the exponents. on the variables. So if we look at each one of these examples of monomials and we state their degree, on the negative 7, how many variables are there? There's none. So the degree would be 0. On the x, What's the exponent on that x? 1. There's not one written, so it's a 1. So the degree is 1. What's the degree of 4x? Well, there's a 4, but when we're talking about degree, numbers don't matter. Just exponents on variables. So that one would have a degree of 1 as well. x squared y. Well, there's a 2 on the x, but there's another variable that has a 1. The sum of all the exponents on all the variables for that term, 2 plus 1 would be 3. The degree would be 3 for that monomial. What would the degree of this monomial be? 5. Okay. But it's only the exponents on the variables that you look at. Okay? You don't look at the exponents on numbers, only on variables. Okay. All right. Monomials make up polynomials. Okay. <laughs> a polynomial prefix poly, P O L Y, means what? Many. Many could be two, could be 15, could be three, but it's just more than one. That's all that a polynomial is. It's got more than one. Term. So it's the sum or difference of monomials. 
Every polynomial is made up of monomials. Every polynomial is made up of monomials. Some examples of that. X plus 4. That's a polynomial. Because X is a monomial and 4 is a monomial, just like up here. We had that. 3X minus 7. That's a polynomial. It's a, it's a difference of two monomials. 2x squared plus 5x minus 4. That's a polynomial. It's a sum and it's a sum and a difference. It's got both. Okay? But each term, each monomial is separated by a plus or a minus sign. Okay? That's, that's what's going on here. All right. And then we'll do one more. 6xy minus 8y. That's a polynomial. Got more than one variable in it. That doesn't change anything. It's still 6xy is a monomial, 8y is a monomial. They're separated by a subtraction sign. That's what makes it a polynomial. Okay. All right. Now, the next thing is the degree of a polynomial. Just like we talked about monomial, we're going to talk about the degree of a polynomial. The degree of a polynomial is the largest of the degrees of the monomial. Okay, what that means is you look at the degree of each term of a polynomial, and then you pick the biggest one for the degree of the polynomial. Can it wait? Yes, it's not going to then. Hang on just a second. Back to it. All right, so when we look at these, this example here, what's the degree of x? What's the degree of 4? Four? Four. No. Zero, because there's no variables. Remember, degree of a monomial only deals with variables. So the degree of this is 1. The degree of that is 0. Which one's bigger? The 1. So the degree of that polynomial, x plus 4, is 1. What's the degree of this term, 3x? 1. What's the degree of 7? 0. So the degree of the whole polynomial is 1, the biggest. Look at this one. What's the degree of the first term? 2, because the x squared. Then what's the degree of this one? 1, the degree of that. So what's the biggest one? 2. So the degree of that polynomial is 2. The third, or the last one here, we got 6xy minus 8y. 6xy, what's its degree? 2, so the degree of the whole polynomial is 2. Okay. All right. Now, that gets us some of the preliminary stuff out of there, but then we got to talk about classifying, and then we're going to get into some examples of actually doing some stuff here. So when we're going to classify... There's, obviously we already know monomial. How many terms does that have again? One term. If something had two terms, what would be a prefix for two? Polynomial is true, but what would be a more specific one saying there's only two? Think about you ride uh, a vehicle that has two wheels. And you pedal it. A bicycle. So two terms in a polynomial would be a binomial. Three terms, trinomial. Anything bigger than that, we're going to call a polynomial. 
four plus terms. Okay, anything bigger than a trinomial, uh, we're just going to call it a polynomial. Polynomial. Uh, there are prefixes that go with some of the other, you know, the numbers up through. Uh, well, a pretty good way, but we're not going to see anything much bigger than a trinomial here. But anything we do see that's bigger than a trinomial, we're just going to call it a polynomial. Just a generic term for those. Okay. Uh, these three are important when we start doing some other things in Chapter 9, whether, depending on which, if it's a trinomial, a binomial, or a monomial, what you can do to it. So that's why those are important names, and we, we try to kind of hang our hat on those a little bit. So we're going to classify using that. All right, so let's do some examples to do some actual work here. Um, we're going to play this game. Is the expression a polynomial? If so, state the degree and classify. Okay. What does it take to be a, a monomial? What's the rule for being a monomial? One term, what's contained inside of that term? How how are we how what what makes up it of the monomial, not just the degree. What going on between the variables or numbers? Multiplication. multiplication only. Okay, so so if there's something other than multiplication in a term, can it be a polynomial? No. Okay. So if there's division with a variable, it's not a polynomial. That's one thing we've got to kind of keep in mind here. So let's start with this. It's something easy. Three x squared. Is that a? What is that? It's a monomial with a degree, and I'll abbreviate degree DEG of two. That's what we're doing here. Negative five x squared y to the four. Is it? A monomial because it's only one term. What's the degree? Six. Four plus two. Six. Negative eight x cubed y plus five x squared. That is a polynomial. Can we be more specific? How many terms does it have? It's got one, two, separated by a plus sign. So that's okay. So that is a binomial. Now, let's look at the degree. Remember, if it's a polynomial, meaning bigger than one term, we look at the degree of each individual term. So what's the degree of this term? 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 would be the degree of that term. What's the degree of the second term? 2. Which one's bigger? 4, obviously. So the degree of the whole polynomial is 4. Okay. Let's say we had uh, 2 thirds xy minus 6x cubed plus 5y to the fifth x. Okay. We got, what's going on here though? It's a fraction, but it's of what? What kind of, is it variables involved with that? No, it's just two divided by three. It's two thirds. It's just a regular number, really. Uh, the What could kick it out of being a polynomial is if the x was in the bottom. Because that's not multiplication, that's division by a variable. We can't do that. We can, we, two divided by three could also be written as two times one third. It could be written as, uh, 
three divided by one half. You know, a lot of different ways to write that, but uh, that number is okay. So this would be a trinomial with a degree. Okay, well, we got to look at each piece. What's the degree of the first term? Two. What's the degree of the second term? That was easy. Last one, six. So which one do we pick? The biggest one, yeah. Pick, always pick the biggest one for degree. X to the third plus 5X squared minus X plus 7. Polynomial, because it has how many terms? Polynomial. What's the degree? Three. That one's easy because it only has the one variable. So it's three, two, one, zero. Pick the biggest one. Okay. Has division by what? By a variable. That's the key thing. It's not just that it has division, but it's division by a variable there. And that's, we can't do that for it to be a polynomial. So this right here throws it out of even being a polynomial. So this is not a polynomial. How could we write this as not a fraction? Think about exponent rules from chapter eight. What could we do to move this X from the bottom up to the top so that it doesn't look like division? Make it a negative exponent, right? Which would be three times X to the negative one. These, this and this are the exact same thing. So if you see negative exponents, it's also not a polynomial. That, that's also a, a rule, okay? It's the same rule, but it's just presented in a different way. So if you see negative exponents or division by a variable, that's where you, you say, oh, it's not even a polynomial. I don't like to do any of that other stuff, okay? That's, that's a handy thing to know, okay? All right. Let's actually do what the title of the lesson is. It's add and subtract some polynomials. You did this yesterday, if you were here, we just didn't call it that. We called it putting like terms together. And subtracting polynomials is exactly the same thing. Okay? So we're going to add and subtract. Apple G. Let's take this polynomial, 3x plus 7. What kind of polynomial is that? What size? Classified. Two terms. It's a binomial. So if we take one binomial and we add, let's say, 4x squared plus 5x minus 3. But hang on just a second. So this would be a what? This would be a trinomial. We're adding... A binomial and a trinomial. It doesn't really matter about that, but it's good to know that. What are the like terms? 3x and 5x go together, right? The 4x squared, why is it not like the 3x? It's got an exponent on it. So remember, to be a like term, you got to have the same exponents with the same variables to be able to put them together. So the 4x squared doesn't have anybody like him, so we're just going to copy him down. And then we're going to put the like terms together. We got a 3x plus a 5x together. Be 8x, right? Same way we've done that for a long time. We've been adding like terms for a while. Okay. And then the 7 and the minus 3 are like terms. 
So that'd be four, yeah. So it's a positive four, so we put plus four. Now we've added two polynomials together. But it's the same stuff you've been doing with like terms, but we're just calling them polynomials now. So it's not anything new. It's just a little different. You got exponents a little more often now. That's the difference. Let's take this. Let's say we had 5x squared plus 7x minus 10 plus another trinomial. Let's say it's 16x to the third minus 3x squared plus 4. Happen to both be trinomials, but that really doesn't matter what size they are to start off with. Your, your job is to look for like terms. So what I usually do, this is how I, I approach this, is I look at it and say, okay, what's the what's what piece has the highest degree? All right, is there anybody else that, that matches him that's a like term with him? Is that, there's another x cubed? No, there are no other x cubes. So I'm just going to say, okay, well, that's plus 16x cubed. So I'm just going to copy down the positive 16x cubed. So that I'm done with that one. And if you want to mark them out when you finish them, that's fine. I usually don't, but you can. It, it might help you. Okay. Then the next highest degree is what? Two. Okay. I got a 5x squared. And then I got a plus negative 3x squared. Are they like terms? So what do they get together? Positive 2 x squared. Okay. Well, like x cubed, then there's x squared. The next one would logically would be seven x would be next because it it's got a, a a degree of one where the ten and the four have a degree of zero. So I'm gonna go with this one. Is there anybody that's like seven x? No. no. So we just copy down plus seven x. And then the minus six comes in for the last one. And there we have the sum. So it was a trinomial plus a trinomial, but it didn't end up being a trinomial. That, like I said, that really doesn't matter uh, until you are asked to classify. If you're asked to classify, then you look at your answer and say, okay, that would be a polynomial because it has four terms. Okay. Do another one here. Let's say we had 5x to the third plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 4x squared plus 3x to the third minus 6. Again, we're adding. So we don't have to worry about sign stuff changing on us or anything. So what's the highest degree in here? Three. So let's put things that have threes together. What goes together? Three X squared. Those two. So together that'd be eight X to the third. And again, when you're adding and subtracting, the exponents are never going to change when we're adding and subtracting. Okay. Exponents never change when you're adding and subtracting. Just the coefficients or the numbers in front. Okay. What's next? The x squared. So we got negative 2x squared plus positive 4x squared, which is positive 2x squared. Good. Next? 4x. There's nothing else like it, so we put a plus 4x. And then a minus 6. We've added that together. All right. So addition, not very difficult, just looking for like terms. Yeah. Not right now. I always try to go ahead and start putting it in that order because later on you want it in that order uh, for other reasons. Okay. So if you'll go ahead and now start trying to put it in order, biggest to smallest. That'll save you from having to think about doing it later. Just get in the habit of doing it now because everything we do from the middle of chapter nine on, it needs to be in order. There's no rule that says it has to be right now, but I'll go ahead and do it just to just so I don't have to think about it later.
Okay. Brian asked a great question. She said, does it have to be in that order from smallest to greatest? Technically, no, but it sure makes it a little easier later on. If you'll just go ahead and get it in order, biggest to smallest by degree, that will save you a little headache later on because there's uh, when we do factoring later on in chapter 9 and 10, if it's not in order, factoring is much more difficult. So we put it in order to make it easier. So if we put it in order now, we don't have to think about it later. Okay. All right. So we've done some addition. Let's look at some subtraction problems. Um, that's J. Let's say we had. Um, let's get one there. All right. That's a good one. 10Y plus 5 minus 3 minus 6Y. So when we're doing this, there's a couple of different ways of doing it. I, I usually don't distribute the minus sign uh, and change all the signs there. I just usually think, okay, 10 minus whatever's in there. That's the way I do it and think about it. If you want to just say, okay, this becomes a plus and everybody here changes signs, you can do that. A lot of times I think that creates more issues because you may forget to change the sign of one. Where if you just think, okay, what's the sign between them? It's minus. So what's 10y minus negative 6y? 16y. And then 5 minus 3. Be plus 2. It's a positive 2, so we use plus 2. Out of that. Where it can get a little confusing with this is if you had something like negative uh, 2x squared plus 5x minus 8 minus four x to the third plus 5x squared minus three something like that 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 this is one that, that could be confusing. So again, I usually start with the biggest one and go down. What's the biggest one here? Be the, the x to the third, right? But it's a minus 4x to the third. Or there's not any 4x to the thirds in the first polynomial. So what does a minus 4x to the third turn into? Negative 4x to the third. And, and that's, it, that's not, doesn't seem too confusing, but it's one of those things that, that I see missed a lot over the years. Okay. Then we did x cubed, so the next stop is x squared. So we have negative two x squared minus positive five x squared. So negative two minus five would be is it positive seven or negative seven? Be negative seven x squared because it's negative two minus five, so it's making it more negative. Next stop after squares or plane x's, we got a plane x right here. We got 5x minus, wait, there are no plane x's there. So where, what happens with the 5x right there? So it's saying that it's positive right now, so it's going to stay positive in the next line. So it's plus 5x. And then we have negative 8 minus negative 3. Be negative 5. So all that time we spent back in, in August about adding, subtracting positive, negative numbers, all that stuff. It wasn't for, you know, it wasn't for nothing. We we want I want you to be able to do that without a calculator, hopefully, because it, the time it takes you to pick up that calculator and do that, you could just know it. Let's look at one more of those. Let's say we had. Um, 4x squared y plus 5xy minus 8. Looks similar to the one for minus 11 plus 
x y plus 7 x squared y. So getting two variables in there. All right, so two variables is a little more difficult to do because you got to worry about matching up all the parts to, to the terms, okay? So if I still take my rule about highest degree, what's the highest degree in this stuff? So I got here, I got x squared and y, so the degree of this term would be 3. The degree of this term would be 2. The degree of that term is zero. So, so far that's the biggest one. Uh, same thing's happening over here. So we're going to start with the thing that has a degree of three. Is this term the same as that term as far as like terms? Got the same variable with the same exponent on each of the variables. It's got to match up perfectly like that. So we're going to say four x squared y minus seven x squared y, which would be negative three. Negative three x squared y and then obviously we'll go to the next thing that has variables so the 5xy minus 3xy positive or negative 2 positive 2 so we're going to put plus 2xy and lastly we have negative 8 minus 11 negative 19 Got to watch your signs and all your stuff as you're doing this, okay? Just takes a little bit of practice. A lot of, you know, it's a lot of the same stuff you've been doing, like terms. The handout I left for you yesterday, like terms. That's the name of the game when you're adding and subtracting, okay? Remember, exponents don't change if you're adding and subtracting. Be careful of that, okay? All right, page 557 out of your textbook. We'll do number three through 26. We'll do all of those 24 problems. It's not, not many. You got a good 45 minutes to, to do those. That's almost two minutes a problem. It none of these take that long.